Hello and welcome back uh, to the workshop and thanks for checking out this video. The topic for today is going to be the hand grips I put on my folklore hiking sticks. This video is crafting, it's been a little while since I've done anything a little bit crafty but um, I'm actually going to show you um, how I do it, why I do it and the theories behind it, the pluses and the cons. And I'll get straight into it. I've got one here. A really good example of my bushwhacking model uh, hiking stick which is primarily aimed at people breaking trails or on difficult trails I've gone through all the uh, design features about it on other videos but this one here has my grip or the, the style of grips I put on these hand, um, hiking sticks this one has seven and it's in a position due to the design and the actual use of this stick to be used for bushwhacking so you can get a good swing you need two hands if i'm putting it on as a hand grip it will sit slightly higher this will be brought up higher so this hand or the opposite hand whichever you use left or right handed will hold the stick but for a bushwhacker it's further down because it's for the second hand to actually get the grip and enable you to swing it to take out the vegetation the bushwhacker model has seven um, grips put on it quite simply because you're swinging a lot of weight and mass i do five for the hand grip there's a lot of people that do not even like hand grips. I've met a few which are complete purists and they don't even want a lanyard or a lanyard hole. It's just a completely smooth stick. And their argument is that when they're flicking it, they flick, they let the stick slide through their hand, hold, push down, flick and slide. And they li I like their hand to be able to slide up and down and over the hiking stick. Um, they are in they are the minority i don't come across many of those uh, most people want a lanyard but there are purists out there but getting back to the hand grip that is one disadvantage if you do have a hand grip you are feeling it all the time a nice smooth handle you know gives you the ability to move your hand easy in the flow a grip you are negotiating what it's there for a bit of a grip so that's one downside but the plus side is quite obvious obviously and evidently you do have a firm grip on the stick and obviously for me as a manufacturer it's more time and effort to do that which i'm going to show you now um but what the customer wants a customer gets i don't charge any more to do that but if i'm doing wood burning on the stick i obviously do a, a smaller and less complex or time consuming wood burning of an animal i do like a very small squirrel or just a leaf and an acorn nothing you know too much or time consuming because quite simply i've invested it in doing the, the grip on the handle so yeah we'll get straight into it and um we'll start thinking about doing the grip but this one here evidently is on its way to kent it's just been purchased so uh yeah some Lucky Hiker has got a really serious hiking stick here and it is it is a, you know, top of the line tool. But um, yeah, I'll put this one down. I've got to wrap this and get it ready to go first thing tomorrow. But I have uh, some hiking sticks in the corner which are pre-shaped blanks. All I've done is straighten them strip the bark off give it its first initial sanding and they're left like that and i'm now going to select ones to put the hand grip on and um, from there they'll go through the rest of the process to end up as a finished item as a finished item so we'll have a look and select two which i'm going to put some grip on Right then, let's uh, select a couple. And to be honest with you, the first two here look possibly the best candidates. I've uh, got a smaller one there. These two. I'm probably going to roll with these two here and put the hand grips on. As you can see, they're not 
in any way shape or form you know in any kind of finished condition at all they're just pre-shaped they're straightened as much as i want to straighten these pieces of wood they've been debarked sanded and sort of like inspected to make sure i can go any further with them but yeah I, i'm going to get the hand grips on and uh, then i can finish doing all the finishing stages of the production then I've got some safety gear here and it'll all become apparent. I've got a mask, eyewear, ear protection, gloves. There's my sticks. And as you can see, I'm out in the front part of the workshop, which is basically the utility room where we throw everything and don't have to worry too much about it. And that's why I'm doing it here. So any dust can blow out when I have the doors open and it doesn't go further back into the workshop. But um, I've got uh, some chainsaw files of different grades. I've got a craft knife. I've got some mask tape, and that will become apparent. I have a grinder here and I have an assortment of sandpaper. I've got a chair for myself because you need to be comfortable. You do not want to stress be in a stress position. And I'll quickly now run through my procedure before I even start doing the actual uh, handle engraving or, or carving or cutting out whatever term you'd want to use. Right, I've now got the first stick and what I'm doing, I'm looking for where my hand's going to sit the best place for it, uh, for comfort and where I think that grip is going to be more useful to somebody with their hand. Let's face it, it's pointless having the grip mostly situated at the top and your hand is holding it completely sliding off or too far down and you're going to be stooping to grab it. Um, Obviously, that will come down to choice and your personal experience to where it tells where this stick is actually telling you it wants to be held. And it's about here for me. So I'm going to grab my masking tape and I can see a little notch there on the top. And with this masking tape, what I'm going to do is do a complete circle and it has to be as symmetrical around in a cylinder on the actual shaft as you can get it and I'm just peeling it right so what I'm doing is I'm getting the masking tape and I'm starting it there placing it now I'm going to follow this around to create a line which joins up with the other one and it does require you to actually possibly peel it back once or twice to get it fully in position and i already can see i need my reading glasses for this not my ordinary glasses right that's okay you can see i've got that mask and tape hopefully i'll bring you around so you're not in the sun so much you can see this masking tape here. So hopefully this shows up on camera if I bring it back, perhaps against my green t-shirt or the black little wetsuit. But in any case, it's a cream color of the masking tape and the actual hazel wood on this particular piece is actually as cream as you can get it. So, you know, I'm gonna get a job for it to stand out on camera. But I'm thinking you can see why it's there. It's there for me to actually run the grinding disc around and cut a shallow groove all the way through to produce the hand grip. Um, you'd be better off using a Dremel or a Pacific tool aimed at this purpose, um, quite simply because a grinder and a grinding disc it's not the safest method to be doing this. In fact, I'd go and say, don't copy what I'm doing, get a Dremel to do it. But all I'm showing you is the process I use to achieve this effect. And um, yeah, so I now have two lines I can cut. So let's get cracking. I'm gonna put some safety gear on. I am at least trying to be safety conscious while I do this. 
Right, I've laid the stick down in this position here and I'm using the hand adjustment um, mechanism because quite simply, as you can see, it's smooth and I can hold it there, bring it across and I can now work and gently turn this without damaging the wood there and secondly, keep this turning while I hold the grinder in one specific position and hopefully gain a good cut or bevel into that wood. So you can kind of see the effect I'm getting there. And this isn't the cleanest um, I've been able to get it. But I'll be able to work that with uh, the chainsaw files and some sandpaper to achieve a nice shallow U into the wood and take all these sharp edges off. But you do not want to go too deep because you still have to leave some meat for the integrity of the handle. Right then, you can see I've added another piece of tape and I'm going to basically do as you've just seen with the grinder and take out a shallow groove. Now, all these grooves will need cleaning out with the various grades of chainsaw file and then basically get a piece of sandpaper, go in the gully and just give it that finer sanding. There's a couple reasons for that. Obviously, you don't want to get uh, the customer or yourself to get splinters in your hand. And you need to take the... Because what will happen is you'll be left with a square edge. And with wood, if you've got a square edge, it very quickly damages. And it becomes basically a splinter hazard. Or it will and then allow you to take out bigger chunks of wood as it gets damaged. If you round it that eliminates a lot of those hazards so yeah I'm going to get the grinder and I'm going to follow this one around and that'll give me my third line and I'm going to repeat this process till I've achieved uh, the five uh, lines I want and um, it may look a bit rough and ready at the minute but like I said when I get the chainsaw uh, files in there and clean it up I'll have something pretty much of the desired effect that I would like to be able to go through the various grades of sandpaper and achieve a finish that I can then pass on to the customer. Obviously what I'm showing you here and I think I may have touched on it with the grinder and how I'm doing it. It's not the correct tool. It's not how it should be done. I'm going to say it once more. Don't follow what I'm doing. I'm doing this just to show you what I do. You should always think safety first. And even though I'm doing it with that, like I, I've got safety goggles. I've got ear protection. I've got a glove on the hand. I'm working the wood, turning it around. And on top of that, I've got ear protection protection here somewhere i'm covered all the way oh and sorry i said that didn't i and i've got a mask so you know i'm doing my level best here but i applaud you to go and get the proper tool to do this job but um you can see what i'm doing to achieve the effect desired effect i want for the customer so i'm going to get tooled up as they say in the trade and um yeah do the next one
The sun's really coming in, beaming in here, and you can see all the dust particles. That's why you have to wear a mask. And it's actually beaming through the stained glass window there. But uh, yeah, getting back to the stick now. I have completed my five cuts. So I'm going to take all this tape off, have a quick little uh, look at it, and then we'll start cleaning it all up. Right then, I've took the tape off and I can pretty much see what I have here. And it's not been the best job I've ever completed, but it's something I can actually salvage and pull back using the two grades of chainsaw um, uh, sharpeners. And that's all they are. There's a smaller one and a slightly bigger one. I'll go with the smaller one first and then uh, do the bigger one and then we'll have a look at it and we'll start doing the internal sanding with sanding paper. So, the smaller one, all I'm going to do is place it into the groove and you'll see this one fits fully down to the bottom of that uh, cut. So I can get a good clean all the way through that trench. And all I'm going to do is just basically work my way around it. It may require you to angle it so you take off some of the higher uh, bits of um, wood on the channel. And as you can see, it's, it's pinching tight in some areas and flowing in others. So I'm just kind of moving the, the actual uh, file left to right just to widen it. Or if it's wide enough, I just flow through it so I don't increase it. And basically, that's all I'm doing. I'm going through the various channels. And that one looks all right. Move on to the next one. So I've achieved all I really want to do with the files. I mean, my style is a little bit rural. Um, obviously, if you were looking to do this with a greater de uh, degree of finesse and, and absolute finish, you would carry on to your desired um, effect. But I've achieved what I want to achieve. And basically, I've just got an old sanding um, uh, sanders. A sanding pad and it's quite war so it's not too aggressive and basically all I'm doing is fitting it in folding it over like that and fitting it inside the channel and I'm just going to work all this around and it's quite laborious because you've got to go around each one and it might take um, you know a few minutes on each one and then I'll get a slightly less aggressive piece of sandpaper fold it over the same and just go down through those um, grooves in the same manner so I'm going to continue this and um, yeah I'm <laughs> just going to keep sanding so yeah this is the laborious part of the job really and you can't escape it you just have to do it Well, so there you go. You can see how I produce a handle grip for either the hand itself, the leading hand, which you're going to use, or the second hand, which I use, which is used on my bush uh, whacking model to provide the impetus for the swing. So, yeah, that's how I do it. Um, it's not the uh, correct way you should go about doing it with the correct tools. And I've stated that before. So always think safety and don't do as I do. But um, 
from here I've really got to now go into the full finishing of this before I go on to the wood burning and the finishing uh, procedure. I've shown that multiple times so I'm not going to take you through that any further than here. And you can get the idea of where you got to go and if you require or would like a better finish for yourself, well you know as much time as you've got and as much material as in sandpaper and things like that you crack on and do achieve the result you're looking for and um, yeah i hope that was interesting for you and you could see how i achieve that actual result i've just had a friend drop over and drop a load of sticks off to me which i'm going to go and sort out and uh, rack um, it's obviously from an agricultural job he's done and um, what is one man's waste and throwaway product is uh, somebody else's uh, gold. So there we go. There's a, a load of sticks or a pile of sticks. Um, I think he actually said that they were from a cherry or plum. They'll need a lot of straightening, but I'm sure there's something there I can use. So I'm going to go and get this racked and get it drying and see what I have in 12 months or what I can make from it. Well, that was just a quick insight into, uh, you know, a little bit of my technique, how I go about producing a handle, whether it be the leading hand or trailing hand. But uh, you can see that if you put uh, the effort and time in, you can produce a worthwhile result there. And as I've said, this is uh, heading up to Kent. But um, yeah, uh, that was basically how I go about doing that. Um, it's not an everyday occurrence, like I said, with, within my stick making, but you know, I still provide it if it's asked for, and for some models, it comes as standard. So yeah, this is uh, Andy from the Folklore Hiking Stick Workshop, and uh, I hope you enjoyed a quick little look about and see what I'm up to. So take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you guys out on the trail.